Good to see everybody, and we're excited about this opportunity to be here tonight, the interest meeting for a community Christian. And uh, we're going to open with a word of prayer and then tell you a little bit about what's going on. Lord, we ask you're grateful for this opportunity to be here today. We're grateful for these families that are represented here. And we pray right now, Lord, that you would just guide and direct us as we seek you. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of Christian education and to uh, um, just do what you called us to do. And so, Lord, we pray for this community. We pray for everything that you've given to us. And, Lord, just give us the strength and the community to provide. And, Lord, I pray for the families that uh, if uh, this is a fit, that you'd make it known. And, Lord, we just seek you tonight. As questions may be asked and answered, we just turn it all over to you. We know this is your school. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, we please want to welcome you guys um, tonight. Um, kind of our first meeting, and I'm, we're so thankful that you're here, and just very grateful that you've shown up um, amidst COVID, and I just really appreciate it. Hopefully, we've made it comfortable for you within this setting. So, um, but yes, we just welcome you tonight. Anything that you have questions about as we talk, write it down, and at the end, we'll have a Q&A time. So, yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, I know I'm kind of new because many people went to Open Door Christian. And so I, I'll tell a little bit about myself so you can get an idea of where I come from. My name is Danny McEvan. I am I've been married about 27 years and have six kids. I've been a part of Christian education really since I was 19. I've been a part of uh, being a principal, teacher, all throughout the whole, whole my whole adult, uh, adulthood. Uh, I uh, have six kids and five of them four of them are graduates. One's a senior who so graduated this year and have one more high school, so they graduated from Christian school. My background is I've been a part of starting schools uh, from Lee Summit Community Christian to help start the high school there. I was part of starting Northern Hills, Northland, and Westside. And I'm excited about this possibility of starting another school uh, just because I do believe in Christian education. And how I got involved with this, I remember meeting Teresa about a year ago, a little over a year ago, and discussion about Open Door and just knowing that they're going a different direction. And then the next thing I know, I had some parents call me and meet with me, and we just started a, a board from there. And it was kind of just discussing. It's been one year since we last had a meeting here, and since that time, we've been meeting through the COVID and the quarantine. And so we've been meeting about a year. And I know when you start a new school, some of the questions have, well, how many do you, do you think you'll have before you get started? And I truly believe this in my heart, that God has called us to do this. So we're, we're pressing ahead. And when we started schools in the past, for me personally, you ask me how many, school, how, many, how many students do we need? We always say we need one student and you give us McDonald's and we'll have a school. And so that means that shows you our commitment level because we've been meeting a year about this. So this is not something that we're going into lightly. We have a school board reporting policies. And I just appreciate and have grown close to the board members. And uh, uh, it's been exciting to see what God's doing. On the screen, you see it says this here once the next generation most will get them. I'm going to do a little illustration because I do illustrations to kind of help us just see where we're at. There's a lady named Florence Chadwick who is said that she was going to swim the English Channel. And she was took off swimming, and there's boats surrounding her, and she wanted to be the first person to swim the English Channel. And she got three-fourths of the way to the finish, and it was so foggy she couldn't see the, the end. And as she was swimming, she felt like giving up. And she kept saying, I think I'm going to give up. And the kids, no, keep going. And three-fourths, almost really a quarter of a mile from the shore, she quit. And it was about 26, 27 miles she swam. And she quit just a quarter of a mile from finish. Why? Because she says it was foggy. And her comment was that if I could just see, see the shore, I wouldn't have stopped. But because of the fog, it, it caused me to want to quit. I don't know about you, but this past year has been difficult for all of us. Just with many different things, with life, school, quarantine. And it's been like a little fog. And it causes us to want to kind of quit or just give up. And I say it's even more for me, it's more passionate that we need this school more than ever. And we are going, we're in the business of being a part of what God's going to do because 
The fog may try to stop us, but whoever wants the next generation will get them. I do believe that we need to be kingdom-minded, focused on Christ, and that we need to be about what's about the next generation, about impacting these kids' lives for the sake of the gospel. If we are excited about doing that, no matter what, even if there's distractions in the background, we're excited about doing that because we're pressing ahead to see what God has for us. And I hope you would be energized by tonight and pass the word around and get it out because we are excited about what God is doing. And Danny has this uh, quote on it in his school. And I, Did I even say what school I was from? I didn't know if I did. Okay, I'm superintendent at North Lane Christian. And we're in Kansas City. And so I'm actually currently part of our Christian education. And, and excited to be here. All right. Um, so just so you all know, I, I'm going to act as basically our administration office. So I would be the acting administrator that if you do want to put your children in our school, I, that would be me. I'd be that person. So I'm pretty excited to do that because uh, it means a lot to me to be here. I'm, I'm going to take my, my mask out of the stove because I'm parking. So what we have here, I just wanted to show you all. Um, so when we, when we decided that we wanted to, to start the school, and, and yes, we haven't got into anything that was lightly at all. Just Because to commit to this is to commit to you and to ourselves and our family, and if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it, do it right and well. So, um, fill the void. These three words resonate very deeply. Um, my husband actually drew this picture one night when, basically, um, it was after the Christian school that Macy went to, and they, they closed down, and you all are very well with that. We don't need to talk about that, um, but it's very dear to my heart, and it's, it's so close to me that once that closed, it's almost like we had a very vast void. And I, I'm sure you felt that. I felt it probably every day for a year. Um, so we went to, I came home and I told my husband about it. And he drew this picture and he said, we have to fill it. We have to fill the void. And we need to support Christian Ed. So how can we do that as a family and as a community? So um, it was devastating. And I thought to myself, if I can't promise you to be there for you as an educator, um, to be there for you for your kids and for you, then I would step away from that. But I'm here to say we're going to do that. And this school will open. It will open in the fall. Um, so with that said, um, I've been in Christian Ed for since kindergarten. My mother was a teacher in Christian Ed. I went to Christian Ed all the way through um, a senior in high school. And then I went to a public uh, college. And I knew I wanted to be a teacher. Since I was young, and I mean, I had very good, a good role model for sure. Um, but knowing that I wanted to educate kids, I never, once I became an educator, I didn't have the desire to do it in a Christian setting. And God didn't allow me to. He didn't push me in that direction. Um, I left Emporia State, and I just thought I'm just going to go work in the public schools, and that's where God led me. I've I've been working in public ed for 18 years. Minus a few, I had to stay with my daughter, and that was a good thing. Um, but with that being said, I have always been in Christian education, but yet myself never felt being led to do anything outside of just public education. And then I had Macy, and I we moved back to Kansas City. I, we moved to Florida for a bit, and I taught in Title I schools, urban settings. I taught KCK for five years. Um, and we moved back home, and I remember having this conversation, where are we going to put Macy in school? And I didn't even have to question it. I said, oh, she's going to go to Christian school. And she's going to go to this school. And, but again, I wanted to be the public school teacher. Well, then I'd say a year ago, when this all kind of happened, God changed my heart drastically. And I thought, I, I have to be a part of this. So what happened was one day, I remember going to her school, her, her teacher invited me in to like say, to, to watch a sing along or something. And I'll never forget, I walked in this building and if you think about it, 18 years I've just done this one public school, right? Public school. I walk in and I experience something unlike any other. So for that time, it was truly a special gift. And I went in there and saw kids singing about Christ. I saw their teachers loving on them. Um, I've never seen that in education. 
Yes, I'm a, I'm, a good, I'm a good teacher. I love kids. I love my kids. But I can't teach them about Christ. So the moment I saw that, I stepped back, and I was in tears that day. In tears. Because I thought, what have I done? For 18 years, I have taught kids, and I've impacted lives, but I haven't impacted them for Christ. It's a huge letdown. It was a huge, huge letdown for myself. And I thought, I, I, have, to be, I have to be part of this. I wanted to be there. I wanted to, to stop, I would give up my job, and I'll come work for you. And that was the drive. That was where God put that desire in my heart. And I want you to know, being in, in public ed, um, there's a lot of good, right? But there is so much darkness. And I'm not here to talk about that specifically, but what I'm trying to tell you is that I've been in that for 18 years, and I'm, I'm ready to move out of that dark. And to be part of something that is a ministry, but also that's going to I mean, impact your kids for Christ. Like, I, I just, I'm so excited to be here. You have no idea. And to be part of this, um, I just, I'm just, I've been looking forward to this for, for you. Um, so I'm so excited just to have you guys just share with us our vision, our future, our mission, what we want to do at CCA um, for the very first time to do that. Um, so our mission is to provide a purposeful education, which minds are shaped by the transforming power of God, the Bible. Hearts are cultivated by the word of God and the love of Jesus is embodied in serving others. So basically, I think when I see this, I think our minds are shaped, okay, our hearts are transformed by the word of God and we're able to serve others. So those three key points, I feel like... Those are very unique to our our school. Um, so we met with several pastors in our community, and when I say that, I, we went all over town. So we went downtown, east, we went west, we went north and south, and we decided well, we have to meet with them to find out what the needs are. Like, what do you need in your in your uh, church? in your community? Who, what kind of people do you have that you serve? Because I feel like we can just be in our own little bubble and not know the needs of our city because it's very, the, the need is abundant. And so we met with these pastors and these four core commitments kind of came out that they said we need to focus on. So I wanted to share this with you because we are committed to these things. Uh, first and foremost is Jesus. Um, he is our, our Jesus Christ, he's our Savior, our Son of God. And I'm just going to read them for you because it's hard to see them. Um, but in every decision, we're going to honor him first. We're committed to integrating the Bible in every subject and honoring Jesus through personal conduct and our efforts at loving one another. It's Jesus who saves us, and through the Holy Spirit, Jesus who teaches us how to live here on earth. So that's the first, our first core commitment to you. Um, our second one, or they're not in any specific order, is being an image bearer. Um, this is very dear to me. Um, our group, our core group here, um, we have worked together on how can we, in, in this day and age, impact um, more kids. And so maybe reaching to a different level um, in our community and, and really striving to make it unique. So we must know that Jesus, we must know before we can imitate him. We want our kids to know that. Um, it's our goal to help children recognize that they're designed for a purpose and they can discover their own spiritual gifts giving opportunities to reflect Christ in the world around them. So I think that's important. I think there's kids, I mean, I I couldn't tell you if my my uh, 21 first graders that I have really know who they are. I don't know. But I want them to know who they are. I want them to know the value they have in Christ. Um, also community. So this is something that my heart is very passionate about. Um, that serving in, in our community, developing compassion in, ch in children for um, by exposing them to the abundance of need in our world. Our community is very unique in and of itself, as you know. And I, I'm sure you all live in this community, as I think you do. Um, we have so much need. I drive by every day. And I'm aware of that. And I know that we're going to have kids from all areas, you know, all walks of life. We, we could have many kids who are just having, having they're having, they're hurting at their homes. They're hurting. And I, we need to be able to see that need. But also reach out in our community, serve in existing organizations, and create, develop ministries at the school. 
So my desire is that our school would actually be able to have a ministry that the kids could come up with their own and who they want to serve. Okay, if it's if it's the older people at the nursing home, or if it's if it's younger kids that want to serve a specific family, but we would have our own ministries that we could reach out to. Um, and finally, accessibility. Um, we at CCA we've talked a lot about this. We want every child to have an option or the opportunity to go to a Christian school. And because of money, that's not always the case. So we are committed to accessibility means that we're committed to meeting your family's unique financial situation where you're at and building an economically diverse student body that truly represents the, sort of the city we serve. So what I mean by that is we're not just going to give you X amount of tuition and expect you because this is what you have to pay us, but we're going to give you a different um, different option. And I think we it's a good time to talk about that. Is that the next one? Oh, we'll talk about our location, sorry. Um, excuse me. So you're wondering where we're going to be at. I'm sure you are. <laughs> um, we have been so lucky and been very blessed. Um, one of our um, our board members, Frank Spence, has a has a good relationship with this church, the Cure. And this pastor at the Cure Church is so supportive of Christian Ed. He has invited us to to be a part of his church, to be basically housed in his church property on his church property. So. For the time being, we will be at the back. There's a back um, building that's a separate building at the Cure Church, and it's located right off 67th Street. Um, I personally live right on 60, right off 67th, so I'm probably within three minute drive to this church. Um, but it's very close to down the street here. Uh, we will take over this. We don't know how long. It, hopefully, it won't be maybe about a few years until we outgrow it. But we're leasing that, and we, we um, are still working out some of the details of that. But that's where we will be at this point. So um, we'll talk about that church and what it's going to offer to us if it's a few more slides. Or oh, now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is so cool. I, I saw this building, and I thought, this has so much to offer us. Okay. Um, this is just a, a quick deal of the, the building, but this is a huge field that is it's expansive. I mean, it's a, a whole soccer field. Soccer, you can do what any, anything you wanted out there. Um, so one one aspect is that it's got this large, very large field for kids to play or have sports. Also, the pavement, it's got a lot of blacktops so we can have playground. I mean, it's huge. They can do PE outside, you know, anything like that. Also, uh, it's got four generous sized classrooms and the bathrooms are very large. So with only being having four, they're large. They're large rooms. I would say they're larger than my current classroom. Um, so with that, there's only four. So we kind of have to give a take. Also, the safety. I wanted you to know um, that the location of the building, the fencing is all around it. So it's completely private. It's completely secure. I mean, I think the fencing is it's very high. So it's a very safe place. Uh, it already has that protective barrier, which makes me feel good even as a parent, as a work, as a teacher there. So those are kind of the perks of the building. Right now, it's it's still in the works of you know getting that ready. Okay, but I want to share that good news with you. So let's talk about um, tuition. Okay, so at CCA we believe that every child deserves an academically challenging, Christ-centered education. We're committed to that. Honestly, truly committed to making this education available to as many families as possible. Your family, your family, your, any any family. So we're offering a variable tuition program, and I'm, we're going to talk about that. Um, basically, it's it's a price that you can afford. Okay, and it's based on it's going to be based on your income. Okay, we recognize here at CCA that all parents and people we all have different uh, positions of income and where we're at. May not be where we're at in a year, it may not be what we were before, but it's where we're at currently. So we're wanting to meet you where you're at. Okay? And give you that tuition based on that, on that alone. Um, it's not a one size fits all model, it's a range. So I want you to keep in mind that the variable tuition is a range of tuition, okay, based on your own, your set, your set income. Okay. And within that packet, the, the black 
older. There's, this is also in there, okay? So this is kind of hard to see which I'm sure is. Um, basically, this is how does it work? How are we able to do this? So um, when we, so many factors are considered when we determine the tuition amount a family is able to pay. So income, um, unusual expenses such as, let's say, let's say you're taking care of a sick grandmother, you know, or you have extra added income or extra added expenses that, that are taken away from that family. Um, family size, so if you have a large family versus a small family, all of those are uh, part, part of what uh, goes into, not qualified, but part of how that tuition works. Um, so basically, we have found a third party agency called TAGS, and they, it's a, they do Christian schools, they do private schools. They're an online uh, third party, and they will evaluate based on if this is something you would like to, to choose to do, um, they will evaluate your. Um, the things that you put in there, your income, those different types of um, requested things to submit to them. And then they will use their own formula, which they've been in business for 40 years. 40 years. So they've done this for 40 years. Um, so obviously what they're doing is working. It's working well for parents. So they will evaluate that and, and give you a range of tuition that, is, that fits your need. We then would get that information and make that available to you. So you wouldn't necessarily hear back from them personally. Does that make sense? So they would let us know and then we would let you know. Um, so these are some ranges what we we put together based on, I mean, we looked at we looked at the median income in our county and the wide range, and we, we've done a lot of work with, with figuring this out. So they do have their own ranges as well, or their own ways of figuring this out. But at this point, this would be the range based on um, the range that you could pay. So if you are like, oh, you know, Myra, I, I, the tuition's fine, I, it's, not, it's not a burden, or you know, I don't have to do that, I don't have to worry about that, or it's not something I need, then you could pay that full tuition. And that full tuition would be that 5,000. So that's our full tuition. That's how much it would take for a, for a student at CCA to, we need that for them to go to our school. Um, but we, we wanna work with you. And you might be thinking, well, how are you gonna do that? Um, so we are dedicated to to searching out donors, um, people that would sponsor our students and come up with that deficit or just generous giving. So we've, we've looked up, um, I think, over 500 people, yep, 500 people, <laughs> just was like 500, that's a lot, to, that have either come from Christian education that could support it, that we know, even if, you know, even if they couldn't give a lot, but they, but just, we wanna be able to invite them to it. So that's how we would set that up, and just through generous giving of donors. Uh, we have a lot of people, and I think in our community that would be willing to do that. And I trust God that He'll He's going to give that to us. You know, I feel like this is our heart, and this is our community. These, this is what we need here. And as I know, um, the struggle is real this year. And the last thing I want is for someone to say, well, Myra, I want my I want my child to be at your school, but I can't. This I can't afford this. I, I'll work with you. We'll work with you. And tags will work with you as well. So I just want you to know that that's one of our commitments to you at this point. So these are just some fees. I'll let you look through that. It, that's all in your packet. We don't need to go through that necessarily. Um, okay, so what's next? So here we are. We've introduced our school to you. Um, and what what's next for you as a parent? Okay. Um, first of all, I feel terrible that not maybe some of your friends were not, they weren't invited or they weren't on the email that I sent out. So that's my, my, my issue. So if you would let your friends know, um, three things that you can do. So there's an enrollment interest form in your folder, the black folder that we have here. Um, and inside of that, let's see. working with us 
to create everything online. So online applications, online forms, everything online, which is fabulous. So um, they're set to go live on February 15th, so two weeks. At that point, you could go online and you could apply for the variable tuition. You could apply for uh, admissions through them at that point. Um, so if you're interested, what we would do is we would send you a direct link because at that point our website, we're still working on that website, it's not up and running yet, just to be honest with you. So but by that point we will have a link that we can send to you. So if you want to go on there and enroll or at least fill an application and see and look to see if your, your information in there about the financial part, um, that would be a, that would be the first place to maybe start if you'd like to do that. But we would be happy to send that link to you around that 15th. Um, finally, our website, we have an address, but if you go there, you won't find it. <laughs> so our address is um, CC, CCA, uh, that's okay, right. CCAKCK.org, okay, that's our, uh, our website. And what I email you would be the correct the email address for that as well. So anything that, um, that you send our way comes directly to me. So, um, and actually, if this is my phone number, it's out of area, but you can, you can text me, call me, or email right here as well. Um, currently, I, I, I don't think I told you, currently I'm teaching actually in the DeSoto schools in Shawnee. I teach first grade. And um, I have to go to my principal next week, or this week, that, um, <coughs> that I'm no longer going to come back to teaching at her school. And the teachers around me said, why are you nervous? Like, you do that? You know, because they, they, I've been talking about this for a year. And they know, I, they know I'm not going to be around. So I, I've got to, I have to tell her, like, tomorrow. That, and you know, I'm, I mean, I have no, I, it, it's like a freedom. So if anything, I, I'm just so excited um, to, that you're here to be part of this. I just want you to know, in, in my heart, this, you guys are the first to hear about this. School. So, um, if you have friends that would love to hear more, if you have friends that say, hey, I wanted to go and I didn't feel comfortable being here, I'll, I can Zoom with you. I can do that. I even thought about sending a Zoom link out to parents, like, because I could easily, we could easily share this. So, um, at this point, we've thrown a lot of information at you. Do you have any, what questions do you have? I know we didn't cover everything, and a lot of it are the little details that will come into play, but what questions do you, that you might have at this point? Stop it. Yeah. What role does the spirit have 